order to play fast, we have to practice slow. An infant doesn't just sprint out of the womb. That'd be terrifying. Horrifying, really. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and if you're interested in saxophone master classes, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button to work on your front F fingering. Now today we're talking about technique, how to make yours faster, more efficient, and more relaxed. And we are on month two of our free fundamentals course. You can join on the link below. It's free. You can join at any time and catch up or just jump right in. Our February assignment is about to be posted, and that's what we're going to be using today, our free monthly etude to talk about technique. And like all months, we're going to have sound, technique, and musicianship assignments. Now this month's listening assignments are Gene Amon's Blue Jean, and Itzhak Perlman playing the Elgar Violin Concerto. Why Elgar? Well, wax on, wax off, Danielson. Trust your sensei. Now today's mini masterclass is focusing on technique, and we'll be using the February Hitchcock Etude as an example. If you're not quite up to speed to play this fast yet, don't worry. We also have another Blues Intermediate Etude posted this month as well. So the first concept we're going to hit today is finger efficiency. So if you want to get your fingers flying, Figuratively, we need to make sure we're hitting the optimal fingering for each note, more literally. So the first thing I have my students do is go through the entire etude with a pencil and mark in optimal fingerings. Make sure you're marking in your side B flats, your side F sharps, whichever chromatic fingering is going to work best. And if you're not sure, don't worry. We're going to be covering this over the course of this entire year. We're going to find little examples in each etude, and we'll talk about optimal fingerings over the course of this entire year. But for today, I want to point out one optimal fingering. Let's take a look at bar 13 and see if you can spot an inefficiency in the fingering. So listen again and see if you can spot the inefficient or non-optimal fingering. I'll exaggerate it a little bit this time. See if you can tell. So what you've probably noticed is that going from D to C-sharp back to D is a terribly inefficient motion when using standard fingerings. The D has six fingers down and the octave key, the C-sharp, we lift them all up, then have to go right back to the D, and all while blazing along at 200 beats per minute. There's a lot of key noise, and it's not a terribly efficient motion. So what we can do is use an alternate fingering, which is much more efficient. So for that D, we're simply going to lift our top two fingers and add them back on. That's the same fingering for C-sharp. The intonation will be slightly different. On some horns, it will be even better. But even if it's a little wonky in your horn, it's going by so fast in this etude, you're not going to really hear the intonation issue. And if you do, don't say anything. It's rude. So listen again, and you can hear the efficiency of just lifting two fingers in the context of that phrase. So when you're going through a new piece or etude, it's critical that you mark in your fingerings, your alternate fingerings and whatever side keys you want to use in those contexts. And we're going to cover that more over the course of this year. So if it's a side key I want to use, for instance, an A sharp, I'll just mark a little S to remind myself. You can use an S or a symbol or a unicorn or whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. And if your friends ask you why you have a unicorn, you can just say, because Dr. Wally's making my technique magical. <laughs> So mark it immediately before you start putting in the hard work of practice so you learn it the right way. It's much more difficult to go back and relearn a well-ingrained motor motion. That's just neuroscience. Now assuming you've gone through the etude and marked in all the optimal fingerings, we need to talk about the second big concept for playing fast, which is relaxation. In order to play fast and clean, we need to have our muscles relaxed, our fingers, our arms, our shoulders, everything. Every time we tense up, we introduce muscles and tension which works against a clean, fast technique. And muscle tension is actually one of the big causes of performance injuries, tendonitis especially. Anytime we're tense, we're more at risk for getting performance injuries, which can knock us off the instrument for weeks or months at a time. I actually had a friend in college that played with so much muscle tension, he had to have the tips of two fingers removed, surgically amputated. Now he claimed it was from frostbite while backpacking in Northern Ontario, but I'm not so sure. Your technique was bad, Jared. So how do we stay relaxed while playing? 
Well, for years, I would just simply demand it of my students. Whenever they were playing and I could see they would get tense, I would shout, relax, relax. And I could see them tensing up, the little dummies. So I found I needed to take a new approach and it led to practicing with confidence. Now, how do we feel confident? We practice slow, small chunks. A terrible name for a cereal, but a good way to practice. And a decent name for a dog food. So let's take a look at the bridge of this month's etude, starting in bar 16. Now you'll notice it's a big old mess of accidentals and kind of tricky, technically, so you think, all right, I'll slow it down. You might try to practice it like this. So obviously 16 bars is too big. It's too big of a chunk for our brain to bite off, figuratively. We want to be reminded of the phrase, how do we eat an elephant one bite at a time? I actually had a young tenor student named Ethan that I asked that question to, and I said, Ethan, how do we eat an elephant? He was working on a big challenging piece. He paused and thought and said, I'd start with the trunk. That kid was creepy. So start with a single beat and slur it. Slurring actually reveals any inefficiencies in technique that articulation can sometimes hide. Also, while practicing a single beat, make sure we always land on the downbeat of the next beat. We wanna make sure we're doing an entire beat to the next beat to make sure our subdivision is accurate with the metronome. Then you'll do the same thing with the next beat, another small, slow chunk. Put them both together and we have a slightly larger slow chunk, a bite-sized chunk still. And once you've worked that a few times with the metronome and feel more comfortable, then go back in and add the articulation. Now, if this feels very similar to the practice strategy we used in the scales video, you're right, it's exactly the same. And I'm gonna keep repeating this technique until you consistently do it to the point where you no longer need me. Though if we're honest, we kinda need each other. We're in kind of a codependent relationship here, but let's keep it going. So we apply the same technique throughout the entire etude, bumping up the tempo a little bit with four bars, then eight bars, then 16 bars. We wanna balance pushing ourselves, trying to strive for faster tempos, while trying to stay as relaxed as possible. But when we get to the peak of what we're capable of, you'll feel a little bit of tension coming in, but don't overdo it. So one of the most effective practice strategies I've found is at the end of my practice session, when I'm bumping up the metronome, I'm reaching my breaking point, right when things start to fall apart and I find myself getting very tense, I don't stop there. What I do is I back my metronome off 10 or 15 beats slower and practice it again as relaxed as possible. I like to end my practice sessions feeling relaxed and feeling more confident than when I started the practice session. I don't like to end my practice sessions hanging on by my fingernails. So try it. When you get to your breaking point, back off and slow your metronome down, play it again, but as relaxed as possible. So get cracking on this month's etude and start biting off slow, small chunks. Hit me up with questions down in the comments, and until next week, go practice. <laughs>